When you look at a graph, you're looking at a whole picture of something, such as the results of an experiment or a survey. But to understand that picture, we need to look at the individual parts of it. Each part has its own role in the presentation of data. The data presented in a graph are grouped into categories that we call variables because they're likely to change, you know, they're variable. The skeleton of the graph, the thing that gives it its structure, is its axes. This gives us a way to organize our variables. The horizontal axis is called the x-axis and the vertical axis is called the y-axis. These are the same x and y variables you've probably seen in your math classes. Typically, the x-axis represents what we call the independent variable. This means the thing that doesn't change with the experiment. Common examples are time or distance. The y-axis is the dependent variable. It depends upon the x-axis. Think of it as something you don't really have control over. This is the variable that changes with the experiment. For example, in a previous episode, we talked about diffusion, which is the movement of molecules over time. We could graph the data in a few ways. One would be to graph how many molecules have crossed a cell membrane at a given point in time. Since we're measuring known times, the thing we are not in control of is the number of molecules. So time would be on the x-axis. The number of molecules depends on how long things have been diffusing which we have no control over. So this would be on the y-axis. Looking at this graph, as time progresses, meaning as we move to the right, we see more molecules traveling across the membrane. This translates into a higher number on the y-axis. Okay, let's do another one together by graphing how far a molecule has traveled at a given time. How would you label your axes? Pause this video and write down your answer. You can use the empty graph template on the first worksheet located in the links below. Otherwise, you can use a piece of paper and draw your axes. When you think you have the answer, press play. Welcome back. You started with something that looked like this. Remember, the y-axis is the variable that isn't under our control. So what is it? If you said distance, you're right. Distance would go on the y-axis because we can't control how far a molecule travels. Time will go on the x-axis because while time changes, it doesn't vary. Five seconds is five seconds no matter who holds the stopwatch. Now, we can present the data from our molecule distance problem in a few different ways. There are many types of graphs, but to keep things simple, we're going to show you some common ones. You can have a line graph where the data are represented as a straight line. A scatter plot graph shows the data as individual dots on the graph. Each dot represents one measurement. Biologists like these because they show specific measurements. A bar graph shows data represented as bars that stretch up from the x-axis. Bar graphs are great for comparing categorical data or yes versus no data. For example, we polled Visible Body employees about their favorite movie genre, and here's the graph we made from their responses. A pie chart is data represented in a circle divided into sectors, each of which represent part of the whole. These charts are a great way to show proportion. For example, we polled Visible Body employees about their favorite ice cream flavor, and here's how we represented their responses. As you can see, the majority of people preferred cookie dough, with mint chocolate chip coming in second. The larger the piece of the pie, the larger the proportion that the piece represents. These are just a few of the different kinds of graphs that you might encounter, and there are many more types of graphs, but this should be enough to get you started. So far, we focused on graphs with one line, but when, as scientists, we wanna compare data, we will put multiple lines on the same graph for a more apples to apples comparison. So going back to our diffusion example, we can compare the diffusion rate of two different molecules. You may remember that big molecules diffuse slower than little ones. This means that the distance the molecule travels over time will be shorter for large molecules because they can't move as quickly as the little guys. The lines would end up looking something like this. Note here you can compare the height of the line and its angle or slope. 
Now, taking everything that you've learned so far, let's try and interpret these graphs. Which one of these shows an increase over time? If you said A, you're correct. We know this because as time increases, or as we move right on the x-axis, the value for y gets higher. In B, the value for y stays the same, regardless of what x is. And in C, as we move to later time points at the right, our height on the y-axis decreases. Even if you're looking at a bar graph, you can often use this kind of logic to start finding trends. What if there isn't a trend in the data? In those cases, the points will appear randomly positioned. Interpreting graphs does require a bit of caution. Looking at this graph, we see that as the number of pirates decreases, global temperature increases. Does this mean that by increasing the number of pirates, we could impact climate change? Sadly, no. Just because two things seem to relate does not mean that we can infer that one caused the other. Or, in technical terms, correlation does not equal causation. How would we be able to figure this out? We would have to create an experiment where these were the only two variables. Now, let's wrap up with a summary of everything you've learned. There are many ways to graph something, but for the most part, a few rules hold true. The x-axis is the independent variable. It does not change with our experiment. The y-axis is the dependent variable, and it's usually what we are testing. This is the variable we don't have control over. We can look at y and infer trends. Is it increasing? Is it decreasing? Or is it staying the same as we move along x? Just because we see a trend doesn't mean that x caused the trend. Okay, so now you know about the basic types of graphs and how to read them. In our next video, we'll look at more complicated data, complex trends, and we'll talk about what in the world an error bar is because it's probably not what you think it is. Stay tuned.